keeps us alone. Family, 
always speak stories of your relentless sacrifices. Your selflessness and kindness will always be remembered. You brought so much light and laughter to our day. Now it is our time to celebrate and honor you. For those that know me, know that I'm not much of a morning person. However, I would wake up with great anticipation every morning to experience your love, light, and heart. Every morning you would wait at the edge of your bed, dangling your legs, waiting for someone to assist you down the stairs. It brought me so much joy to see you this way each and every morning. You had a team of women who loved and cared for you. On Carol, you have been work, you have worked tirelessly to care for grandma, and I thank you for that. Just a year before, we bonded by going on our walks, and of course, you would always stop the traffic with your dance moves and effervescent personality. Whenever I went with you, people would point out to me that they knew you and how special of a person you were to so many. Nurse Stacy, you have been more than a gem and an integral part of the foundation that has lifted grandma up time and time again. Grandma, your dancing, kisses, hugs, heart, and strength and resilience are attributes that I will always remember. Attributes and sentiments echoed by everyone that knew you. Not from the eyes. Grandma's sisters and sister-in-laws were not able to be here, but each have expressed their sadness and grief and wanted to share their feeling on what or who to find her. The common themes that stand out are love, laughter, joy, kindness, heroin, and chief negotiator. Aunt Faye, her sister from Canada. Love, laughter, and joy. Mom gave 100% of herself, a heroine who fought battles for others. She was the true meaning of sacrifice. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy nor boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Aunt Etta, her sister-in-law from the U.S. There is so much to say about Monica, but this one stands out. When I was just starting out at Mount St. Joseph, I had to stay with Monica and my brother, Uncle Lynn, Monica's husband. Monica insisted that we share the same bed. She was not having me sleep on the sofa. Monica was loving, warm, funny, and you would never know if she was hurting or feeling pain because she covered that up. Aunt Loreline, her sister-in-law from the UK, Whenever you visited Monica, it was always lots of love and kindness. If you were feeling sad, you always left glad. Aunt Joyce, her sister from the U.S., Monica was chief negotiator. She was tenacious, ambitious, and the only one of us that executed all of her tasks when given. Her laughter, love, and gifts for life.
and no one outside watching Monty Girls. She went to Oberlin High School, started her friends at early age, and got married when she was only 18. At least that's what she told me. She wants to explore the world. She was well read and curious, and she wanted more. She started having children at an early age and left her job at Manchester Parish Library so that she could take care of her son and children. Some of the secrets started to come out as we spoke with each other. In meeting with our elder and yet after the family had a property, of which mommy was a time holder. When asked about the property at the summer time, mommy told her sisters she sold it to the workers. And the other said naturally she was very upset that she did that, but that was mommy. Her children became a lifelong mission always. She gave up what she could have been over and over again just for us. It was only when we were much older, mommy was able to travel and explore the world, going to places we had never been. And even then, she kept coming back home, not wanting to leave us. She was forward thinking. In an era or time in Jamaica where the focus is always on your traditional path to career, mommy had the foresight to look beyond that and saw a vision for each of her children. When Patrick got accepted to natural sciences from the form, from his back at university, which included both my brothers, rather than deterring him from his passion, Mommy was always in the front row, cheering on. Mommy was. She knew without a doubt that Patrick was not only brilliant, but he had a natural talent that transcended the ordinary. The members of his band were diverse, yet we traveled together, at the same pool, we shared the same bed, and supported each other through our band. These qualities were then moments in action. As children, we were exposed to a completely diverse world. Whether it be playing the piano at Mommy's grandma's house, a doctor grandma's house in Kingston, or sitting in Mrs. Browning, if you hope it could be. Or um, every Saturday, we went to church on Sundays, or attended Laura Roberts' ministry. She made sure to support our various sporting activities, football, gymnastics, table tennis. This shaped our diverse thinking. Her acceptance of others, regardless of the background. She can go to you. Everyone in this room knows this as mommy's best weapon. She could have had anything she wanted for herself, but she only saw what was best for her children. She's a definition of the power of attraction. It's not who you know, but who you know you. I lost her to the house of Mount Canada when I was at university and was offered so much job out of the blue. Yes, that was mommy. That summer job turned into a permanent one with our When I came to Canada, mommy reached out to Alan Carly, a Jamaican Canadian member of the Ontario Legislative Assembly, and told him I was here in Canada and he had to meet with me to ensure I got a job. Luckily for all of us, some of mommy's negotiated skills had transferred to me. As pretty soon I was working with the Canadian government. But not because of Mr. Curry, but due to the tenacious, ambitious, and hopefully some of that charm I can inherit from a way. When my brothers formed the band, we were invited to Japan, participating in the one festival, where all the top artists across the world went to perform to get further recognition. Mommy reached out to me and ensured, must ask, that I provided the funds to support the trip. It was a must. I'm sure many others were called to do this as well, but we're probably just realizing that mommy played us all. That was mommy. When there were three of us at university all at once, mommy was an honorary resident at the university. You're reminding me of this. She knew all the students, all the lecturers. She made sure that we got our students home, our bursaries. Um, you know, and she made sure that they all knew she was watching out for us. Or the time when I had a restaurant in Manitoba, and as we discussed the work of the restaurant, it was a no-brainer for her. I had to hire my brothers. We got her own business. Or when she worked in Canada with my cousin Dean, she facilitated the patron of some very religious women to be open to purchase swimsuits. That was money. She was kind, kind of school on her. She never failed 
talk about the sermon and the pasta kind of the pasta kind of this love kind of stands here. It represents the light of Christ. Every Easter is lit. And when Monica came into this world, the light of Christ accompanied her. As she turns to her heavenly glory, the light of Christ will be with her. And so, before the light of Christ, as long as the day lasts, I must carry the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. I am the resurrection and the life. You believe in me, go and die. Yet shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes. Our life is in the knowledge of Christ and God. When Christ our life affairs, then we shall fare with him in glory. Our life is in the knowledge of Christ and God. When Christ our life affairs, then we shall fare with him in glory. If you raise the Lord, who raise Mike and us the Lamb of Jesus in the place of in his presence. Together, we know that Christ was from the dead. We will never die again. Death has no power over him. He knows us Yeah. 
way my neck expressed heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of Monica. Uh, because as we gather, our hearts are heavy because someone has been taken from us. And it leaves a gap. It leaves something that we can hold on to. And we become troubled and anxious. But when we become troubled and anxious, we turn to God. So we're going to take it to the Lord in prayer. We're going to talk, try to make sense of this situation. Because the first reading invites us to peace. Isaiah says that there's a peace prepared for all of us, and we are invited to that peace in the name of Monica. But there's an ambition to be. You've got to have love. You gotta have happiness. You gotta have kindness with you if you want to go to the peace. You see, God calls us to the peace, invites us to the peace, but we've got to do our part. But it's not her part. And she's not the heart of God. It's up to you and I to gather in this fashion and Yes, we must grieve because there is a sad occasion. But we have to be careful that we don't make this a morbid pity party. We have to recognize this is a time for reflection on our own living, our own destiny. You see, just like the disciples, they were troubled. And, and they said, what is going on? Their master is going to be taken from them. They're anxious just as we are. And Jesus, the power of peace, the power of consolation, stands in their midst and says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. You see, that calls us to know. You see, what is the content of our faith. Because faith is going to move us forward to embrace what might be embraced in our faith. We've got to recognize that now our living takes on a new dimension, added dimension, because we were associated with Monica. We've got to look out for and say, how can I honor her memory by my action. How can I honor her memory by the way I relate to the people, those close to me, and those I come in contact with every now and then? How am I going to relate to them? And that means those persons who are persons who drive me crazy seven days a week, twice a Sunday. We have to relate to them. It's not about them. It's about us. Because when someone who drives you crazy and you can't deal with it, you can't negotiate it, they control you. You've got to rise above that. And that's what living is all about. Be able to deal with people. However, they come to you. Because they were not put there by accident. They were in your lives and in mine by design. It is to affect us, to touch us, and see what is the quality of our response. How do we now live even despite those people in our midst? Because we are all to love them. No, not to like them. You know, like the three emotions. You've got to love them as God loves them. That holds us to live. When you can love the people who are so difficult to love and find ourselves rising above their pettiness. And be able to love them. Be able to move on. Be able to rejoice. 
has to find the agency in the least love, happiness, kindness. Find the papers. So you want that? You look at our lives. Look at our living. That's how. What gets us going? What gets us up in the morning and moves us? You've got to go back to that. Celebrate that. Live that. Love that. That's what we got here. We got it here to renew our commitment to live. Then, where is your sin? Thanks be to God, we have the victory in the name of Jesus. But we've got to celebrate that victory by our living. It doesn't matter what we did back then, yesterday, 10 years ago, it doesn't matter. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? That's important. Because now you begin the rest of your life. And that's important. How are you going to celebrate it? Are you going to be the person by someone else? Are you going to rise above that and rejoice in the glory of God? Look on the front of your progress. It says, to God in the glory. That's who we are going to focus on. To God in the glory. We are going to lift up our lives to God in the name of God. We are going to celebrate as if God is joining us in our celebration and moving us forward. So now our hearts are in trouble because we have a place in the Father's house. How is your living? I think now to the consciousness of how you live and how you love. Because that is going to depend upon how we, what your destiny is. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. And he's talking to you. He's talking to me. Just no, don't worry about anything. Have faith in me. I've got to the control. All you have to do is turn to me. Because to God be the glory. So as we take leave of our sister, as we place her in the arms of God with our prayers, let us recognize that she's done her part. She's passing the battle on to you and to me. To live as God has us live. Because now is the beginning of the rest of our lives. And we're going to place it in the hands of God because to God be the glory. Amen. Monica Robertson, may your soul rest in peace.
we pray to the Lord. For those who fall asleep in the hope of rising again, let me see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. For the family friend of our sister Monica, that they be consoled in grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. But what about the seventh year to worship and pray? Though we be gathered together in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And let us all together praise Jesus above us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is here for the collection and the great generosity is for the church of the world. God's daughter through baptism. 
we call the repast. So if you don't know, I know you can find out. Okay? All bearers, please come.